So this is part two of the power steering um, kind of rebuild or repair uh, that I'm doing on the John Deere 440. Uh, it's about a 1960s. Um, if you watch any other videos, I say it's always about. I don't have a, a serial number or anything on the tractor, so I can't tell if it's a 59 or 60. And I think they made it just a couple of years, so I can, it's got to be right around in that area. Um, it is a five-speed, and I did try to give. I, I can do a range of what serial numbers I think it is, but that's as close as I can get. But it's got um, basically it has power steering, so it has a control assembly here where all the power steering lines come into. Um, and then it gets these caps, and out of the caps, there's uh, basically these shafts with uh, pins in them, and that gets uh, that gets basically these uh, steering rods or steering shafts that that um, join up to these. And as you turn the wheel, it changes these little holes where the little holes are at, and it controls uh, pressure going to the rack and pinion assembly. And so this uh, basically slides in here. And it's a pretty neat little thing. It um, you basically get there's a pin that I have, still have in it, so that each one of these shafts does come out. And then inside there, though, there's uh, springs in these springs and these little uh, balls. I have no idea what the purpose of those are, because once they go in, um, you know, this stuff moves around, uh, and I guess the little balls ride around inside there. Uh, but they don't really, uh, I guess they kind of hold it in place uh, from being able to come out. Um, but you, you got to watch when you take it apart to uh, make sure you, you have some way of keeping these little balls from going everywhere. Um, I thought I had a way to keep the little balls from going everywhere. And uh, when I took it apart, um, they still flew everywhere. So um, it's pretty hard to kind of keep them in control. Best thing I'd say, just make sure your shop floor is pretty clean and everything's pretty cleaned up. And uh, that way, when they when they shoot everywhere, you can find them and then just listen for them. But for me, uh, a couple of the O-rings are not bad, but I did have a few O-rings that were bad. And so I was getting um, some leakage outside around these shafts. Um, I was getting fluid coming out and, and dripping down onto the gas tank and everything. So uh, while I had it up in, pulled in, doing all the other stuff, I tore this apart, uh, pressed these shafts out, took everything out, and uh, I'm going to replace the O-rings that go... Uh, to keep the fluid from running out of this guy. So it wasn't, the leak wasn't that bad. Most of my leak was coming from the rack assembly um, in, in part one of this video. But um, while, I was, while I was at it, I figured I'd, I'd do these two because I got some projects lined up for it and I don't want to have to tear it apart again. Um, and obviously the leak's only going to get worse over time. So um, now hopefully I can keep some power steering fluid in it. Um, I actually might use hydraulic fluid uh, next. I like the it's a little bit thicker. Uh, it should be anti-foaming and uh, essentially a power steering pump is pretty close to a hydraulic pump. So, um, you know, I thought that would help keep a lot of the parts and pieces lubricated uh, in the system. It's kind of old um, and hydraulic fluid might be a little bit thicker than power steering fluid. So, you know, where I've got a little bit of wear on some of these shafts and everything that hopefully that a little bit thicker will keep it, or slow it down a little bit from trying to, to, to leak out. So, so that's uh, part two. That's the the valve control assembly uh, for the power steering and uh, that should pretty much when I get all those put back together should finish off the uh, all the power steering uh, repairs.